already back? Wait, did you knock? Oh my gosh, you weren't supposed to see that. Uh, okay, just act surprised when I tell you this is the art we'll be making today. I don't want any spoilers. All right, be right back. Oh, yikes, okay. All right then, what's up my brilliant coders? It's your girl, Jillian, and I'll be your host as we learn how to code digital art in this series from Black Girls Code. Now in this video, we'll continue to learn how to create new shapes in P5JS and make a second piece of artwork, which you've never ever seen before and which I'll reveal right now. Ready? Ta-da! Ooh, ah, we love a reveal. When I designed this digital art, I wanted to channel all the great artwork with empowering social justice messages that I've seen before. So in my own artwork, I chose purple to draw in the viewer's eye. I also included three fists as symbols of empowerment and unity. And I decided to put a cell phone in the center of the image because in the digital age, our phones are one of the most powerful tools we can use to let our voice be heard and advocate for causes that matter to us. Next, I drew a microphone to represent the power of using our voices. And last but not least, I drew a pencil and brush to represent how our writing and art can be powerful tools of protest, advocacy, and activism as well. So I hope that the art we create in these videos can inspire you to continue to use your various crafts and talents to make our world a better place. Feeling inspired to get started? All right, then let's get into it here at the Code Zone. So as you probably remember, we'll first need to set up our canvas. In your text editor, we are going to change the default canvas values from 400 to 600. So now it is 600 by 600. This will give us a little more space for our shapes. Then change the background color in the draw function to purple. This looks good, but I'd like a lighter color purple. In order to do that, I'll click on the small box next to my color and change it to any one on the gradient. And voila, we have a light purple background. Okay, so now I'm gonna let you in on a life hack, an actual useful one. In order to make things easier for us today, we're gonna use the XY tool as we create our artwork. P5JS has many built-in functions to help you draw. If you wanna find the exact coordinates of an object or an area you want to place an object, then you can use the XY tool. P5JS uses mouse X and mouse Y to track the horizontal and vertical position of the mouse when it hovers over the canvas. You can use the console to see the values from your mouse X and Y coordinates. We didn't cover that, did we? Let's rewind for a second. The console is the area right below our text editor. It allows us to input commands as well as show values from our text editor. So now, let's add console log x plus mouse x plus y plus mouse y to the bottom of our draw function. Now our canvas will update and we can hover over the canvas with our mouse. You should be able to see different x and y coordinates in the console. Now that we've learned how to find x, y coordinates faster, let's put it to the test. I'm going to use it as we create the top of our fingers for the fist on the left side. I'll choose a shape that best represents a fist, which would be a rectangle. But if I use a rectangle function, then I won't be able to change each point around the rectangle. Thankfully, P5JS has a function that allows us to connect the four points of a square or rectangle independently. The quad function allows us to set each point in a quad to create many different shapes. Quad means four in Latin, and it is considered a freestyle four-sided shape. It's similar to how the triangle function works. You choose your starting position, x1 and y1, then you can move in either a clockwise or counterclockwise position, setting the rest of your points. x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4. Let's add the first finger using a quad. Below background, I'm going to label left fist. Now let's start adding our coordinates to quad. 
The simplest way is to hover to a place on the canvas where you want each point to go. Then type it into your shape. Now rinse and repeat. I want the first point to be at 45 100, then the next a 60 100, the third point at 65 131, and the last point at 50 134. Okay, that was a lot, like a lot, a lot. As a reminder, you can always take a snack break or a power nap or simply sit still. Deep breath in. I was definitely meditating and not sleeping. Okay, shall we continue? I can copy and paste the second finger below the first, then find my coordinates. After you have found the coordinates for the second finger, repeat the process for the third and the fourth. Look at you, you did that. Oops, forgot these. Speaking of which, we have the top four fingers, but we still need to add a thumb to that hand, don't we? And we also need to add the palm below the fingers to complete the fist. Below left fist, label thumb. For the left fist thumb, we are gonna use a rectangle for symmetry. Okay, I'm gonna break down the thumb into two parts. The top of the thumb going across the fingers and the bottom part that connects to the palm. The top part of the thumb should overlap parts of the finger to show that it is gripping an object, which we'll put in later. And the bottom part will connect at the end of the thumb and push down from there. We can also use the XY tool to find the coordinates. Now, below the thumb, let's make a label palm. The color scheme will be the same as above. And to create the unique shape of the palm, we'll continue using quads. Now, I'm going to break the palm down into two parts the right side of the palm that is connected to the thumb and the left side that connects to the rest of the hand. I want the first point of the quad to be a little off center from the start of the thumb and also leave a gap so that we can add our mic later. So I'm going to go below the thumb on the canvas and find the exact point. X equals 100 and Y equals 170 looks like a good starting point. Point two will be at the outer lower edge of the thumb. Then we'll create the angle from the thumb to the wrist. The last point will also be slightly off-centered, creating the angle of the thumb. Now we'll use the same process to create the left side of the palm. Okay, we've completed our first fist for the drawing. Next, we will create the fist in the middle of the canvas. But before we do that, I thought you might find this interesting. Have you ever wondered how the image of the raised fist we are drawing now turned into an iconic symbol for standing up against injustice in America? The raised fist has been used by many types of people from different parts of the world throughout history to represent revolution, solidarity, and fighting the good fight. In the 1960s, the Black Panther Party adopted the raised fist as a representation of black liberation. But everything changed when two black American athletes raised their fist on the winner's podium in protest at the 1968 Olympics. For the first time ever, the raised fist became internationally synonymous with the struggles that people of color faced in America. One of the athletes, Tommy Smith, said that he saw it as a human rights salute. And today, that sentiment still rings true. So I hope that's a reminder to you that one person, well, two in this case, can change history. Now let's jump back into making our digital art so that you can start changing the world. So we left off at drawing the middle fist. Now, as you can see, it's also a little bit bigger and slightly different than the first fist, but you'll still use the same steps and logic to create another fist. So let's first start creating the brown middle fist. While we're at it, I will also go ahead and start working on the fist on the right as well. Why don't we both work on it and link up here when we're done?
it's really coming along. So far, we have created three different colored fists on our canvas. And now it's time for a pop quiz. When setting your points for the quad function, what directions can you move in? Yes, that's right. Clockwise and counterclockwise. I asked that question because we are about to learn how to make another advanced shape, an arc. And the direction we move is really important. An arc is part of a circle, not the full circle, just a piece. So in a circle, there are 360 degrees. Zero starts in the middle of the right-hand side, and the degrees increase as you move clockwise around the circle. So if we want to draw an arc, like the ones in our picture that surround our fists, you have to tell the canvas by using degrees to draw our arcs. To do that, we'll go to the setup function and type angle mode degrees. The first four values act the same as an ellipse, but the fifth and sixth values determine where the arc starts and stops. Let's take a look at an example of an arc. If I wanted to draw a smile using an arc, then I can start at zero and end at 180 degrees. And because I know you can't get enough of my pop quizzes, I've got another question for you. Ready? Of course you are. Now, suppose I was sad because my friends got boba without me when I specifically asked them to get me some, and I wanted to draw a frown, then which degrees would I start and end at? Did you say 180, zero? That's the right answer. The last value in an arc determines how the arc is drawn. You have three options to choose, open, chord, and pie. Open looks like a sliced orange with the border going around the edge peel. Cord looks like a moon with the border going around all sides. And pie looks just like it sounds. Now we're ready to add the arcs to our background. I want the first arc to be purple with a border thickness of eight. It will be in the top left corner of the canvas and look like a half smile. The width and height will be the same as 600. In our example, we started at zero and moved to 180 to make a smile. So for a half smile, we will start at zero and stop at 90. Now we'll add the second arc to the bottom right-hand corner. The width and height of the second arc will be the same as the first arc and we'll start at 180 and stop at 270. Okay, time to color our second arc. We'll make the color a light purple. Now to do that, we can click on the purple box color and change the color picker to a lighter color. On the bottom arc, I don't want a border, so we don't need to code that in. Now as you can see, we're about halfway done. In our next video, I'll show you how to make a background so we can finish building our art piece. But for now, why don't we take a break to rest our brains, scroll on TikTok, and stretch our bodies. Ooh, and feed our tummies. But before we do that, we have to save your artwork. Go to File at the top of the page at the left-hand side and select Save. Awesome, done and done. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for rocking with me today. And until next time, live your best life. And as always, stay cute and stay coding.